Hello ladies and gentlemen, some of you may be new to this channel and not be aware of what's going on here, uh, but this is my uh, semi-regular video, the tradition that we do over here, where I, uh, in low quality, uh, on a ThinkPad, watch the first episode or whatever episodes are out of every single anime currently airing this season. And uh, give you my thoughts so that you don't have to, because no no one else is gonna do anything like this, right? I'm the I'm the only one. I'm the only person you can trust in this world gone mad. I'm the only one crazy enough to to watch every single anime. So uh, the rules are, we 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 generally skip OVAs and uh, sequels and movies. So it's just like TV anime, uh, unless I've seen the first season. But I'm not gonna watch Kimetsu no Yaiba because. Uh, I haven't seen any Kimetsu no Yaiba, I don't care about it, so we're going to skip it. Uh, but but all of the uh, other shows we, we'll be uh, checking out. So, uh, you know, I don't, don't want to keep you here for too long. Lots of new people in the channel, probably not going to give a fuck about this video. But uh, these these are the roots, okay? We can't let, let this tradition die. Uh, so we're going to start with Oshi no Ko. I read the description for this earlier. And I was a bit confused as to what the hell the plot was supposed to be. Uh, but uh, we'll give it a try. I've just realized that the first episode of this show is over an hour long. I'm going to keep watching it for a while. But um, I don't know. I, I mean, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I just watched half of the first episode of Oshinoko. Um, I'm dropping it, but not because it's bad. Okay, I I have kind of complex thoughts on this. I'm personally going to give it a, a 7 out of 10, even though I dropped it. And the reason for that is, I think this is a very well-made show. And I actually recommend that you check it out. Even though I I don't particularly think I'm, I want to watch any more of this, I think there's a lot of people who will get a lot out of it. It has a lot of humor to it. It's just generally well-directed. The performances are all good. The premise is very off the wall, but uh, I don't know, you might like it. It's just not personally my sort of thing in terms of the, the vibes, the sort of sane any drama vibes. It, it, I say drama, it kind of reminds me of like the sort of dialogue and the sorts of occurrences and framing devices and stuff that you'd find in like a K-drama or a J-drama, um, which is just not something that I personally, it's not an aesthetic I personally like. Uh, that's the main reason that I don't think I'm going to finish this show. Um... But, no, I, I I think, like, outside of that, which is basically just a matter of my personal preference, I think from a mechanical s s point of view, there's a lot to get out of this show. And I, I do recommend checking it out just to see if it's something that you think you would enjoy. Uh, there's, there's a couple of things that I have problems with. Uh, I think the writing is a little, you know, for something that is so out there as a concept for the plot, I think some of the contrivances and plot details are a little lazy, frankly. Um, it's sort of doing the least interesting thing you could be doing with this premise. Uh, I think there's a lot of, like, very obvious setup stuff that's happening in this episode, which is kind of handled a little bit clunkily. I think it could be a little more natural the way this stuff is worked into the plot. Um, I find the, the sort of running themes about lies... They might develop into something interesting. Personally, they weren't super engaging for me. Um, but I recommend with this particular show, you judge for yourself. Because, again, I, I think that there are a lot of people who are going to get a lot out of this show. If it keeps with the quality that, that it was when I was, you know, for what I watched. So, yeah. Can I uh, can I give this a, a strange, maybe a, a not something I normally do. I'm going to recommend this show, even though... I don't think I personally want to to watch any more of it. Okay, next up we're going to be watching uh, Jigoku Raku. Uh, I feel like there was another show with the same name, uh, that I, but maybe, maybe I'm mistaken. Uh, so we're going to be watching Jigoku Raku. So I just watched most of the first episode of Jigoku Raku. This is a period piece fantasy shonen, uh, set in the Edo period. It's um, the same name as a shonen. It's tagged as shown in on Mal. I think maybe that was a show. I thought, I thought when I read the description, I thought that was a Maybe I, the reason I thought is there's an anime with that name. Maybe I just heard about the manga before. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty good. I feel like if I wanted to see this, I would definitely read the manga instead of anime. It feels like a manga type of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, manga is awesome. Yeah, I would put. So if I wanted to get into this, I'd probably read the manga instead. But it's pretty shonen y. Um, you know, not really cool warrior guy. Gotta go to a, a dangerous place to do a mission. He's a cool ass shinobi guy. Not really my thing. But yeah, like. That are across for like three episodes, by the way. Right. And then shit gets real. Okay. I mean, shit gets real is the show. That's how shonen is, right? Yeah, but it's not like. Uh, it gets cute halfway through. It's. Thailand literally starts coming alive and trying to kill them, like the three episodes in. Yeah, I mean, that's it's what a, I'm saying, though. Yeah. It's still the same thing. Um, cool guy has to go to cool place and do cool things. It was published in Shonen Jump Plus, which is a weird situation. Yeah, it's like halfway between. Um, It's just the online branch of Shonen Jump. Like, it doesn't really have a demographic the way that, like, mm-hmm. classical publications really. Yeah, I, I wouldn't call this a cl- like, just from what I watched, I wouldn't call it a classical Shonen by any means right yeah but it's still got shown any vibes yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's definitely shown any but like it has it's way more graphic than most shown right yeah yeah the anime is kind of censored yeah like uh there's a scene where uh guys getting ripped in half by bulls mm-hmm. and they like sort of blank out the shot when you see you would normally see him get split in half they sort yeah. of, like, stylize it so that you can't actually see what's happening. Yeah. So the anime is definitely censored, which makes sense. Um, But I don't super care about that. Yeah, I just feel like if I wanted to get into this, I'd definitely read the manga instead. Um, it's pro- I mean, it's probably fine if you're into this sort of thing. It's not super my thing, but uh, I, could, I could definitely see myself reading the manga of this at some point. Shonen stuff works way better in manga than anime, just from for me so maybe because i can read it way faster i don't know but it, it's always been that way um but um, yeah i think th- the first episode is mostly mostly exposition which i don't really have too much of a problem with i mean they got to get the exposition out of the way somehow i'd rather they cram it all in at once so that you don't have to b- worry about it for the rest of the show but uh yeah, I don't know. Maybe check it out if you... I mean, if you're a shonen guy, you've probably already heard of Jigoku I, I It's actually it's... not as popular as the cheap world than it was. Huh. Okay, well, never mind then. Uh, it's kind of slept on. Don't smite... I think there wasn't an anime for a long time. I see. Yeah. Well, Don't Smite is the shonen manga connoisseur, so... Yeah. Uh, this is what the manga looks like. Yeah, that looks, that looks pretty sick. Yeah. So that's why I was surprised why it was a shonen. I mean, right. this is just every shonen jump plus manga. Like, I the see. The yeah. Yeah, and just like, yeah, yeah. Set cut up and it's just carried around. That's. I mean, they yeah. showed that in the anime. Yeah. They showed the the main guy carrying heads around. I see. Is that too more graphic than shonen normally shows? Um. Yeah. Generally, you don't have like decapitations and stuff in shonen. I see. Like um, like obviously there's the white beard scene that everyone knows. Like, so I, I mean, that's One Piece. They can get away with whatever they want, I feel like. Yeah, but generally you don't, like... <laughs> you don't get stuff like this in a show then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, I don't know. Check it out, if that seems interesting to you. Um, I'm personally not going to watch it, but... Because I'm not super big on Shonen. Unless it's Dr. Stone New World, because I actually really enjoyed Dr. Stone the first season. The second season was... Also... Okay. What is, what, which arc is the second season? Oh, fuck. Cause the first season's the guy who's trying to kill yeah, everyone. Yeah. The, That's second se- one. the second season is he's he's actually good now. Um, And then they... Oh, fuck. It's been so long. They have to invade a cave system. Yeah, so it's like the stone wars are... Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a stone wars arc. Yeah, the stone wars are fucking gross. That's the thing with Dr. Stone. It goes from top tier fucking kino arcs to just complete meat shit. You have back again to top tier kino arcs. It's just also it's pretty Okay, version. well then, this should be a top tier Kino arc, right? This probably should be a top tier It's Kino New arc. World. Is there an arc called the New World arc? Uh, I think that's just the second half of the manga. It's like the New York, New World, like, thing, whatever. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll check out the first episode of Dr. Stone New yeah. World. I expect to enjoy it. I just watched the first episode of Dr. Stone New World. Uh, there's not that much to say. It's more Dr. Stone. If you like Dr. Stone, you'll like this. 
Uh, they do agriculture. As usual, I have qualms about how they depict agriculture in anime. Uh, should I go into this? Mm-hmm. Um, so they got some stuff right, like uh, ancient threshing tools. Historically accurate. Good job. They did that well. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, stuff that they got wrong, though, is that Dr. Stone is set, what, 3,000 years into the future? The wheat that would be around would be descended from modern wheat farms that have sort of gone out of control. Um, the problem with that is in 3,000 years, the wheat would have basically gone feral, right? Like, uh, modern wheat can't survive without human cultivation because producing that much, that many seeds is just not energy efficient for a wild plant unless you have uh, really, really good soil and, and stuff like that. And you don't have to compete with other plants uh, uh, or insects like with pesticides and, and these sorts of things, right? So, uh, so the wheat would probably not look anything like modern wheat. It would look a lot more like ancient wheat. I don't know if it would be as bad as the wheat was when people first started doing cultivating it, which was just absolute dog shit. Um, but uh, yeah, it could be like it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't look like it looks in the show. It would be it would, you, you would definitely get a uh, much less uh, what do they call it like harvest basically. Uh, also, I feel like you need more wheat than... But they didn't really show how much farmland they used. But anyway, I mean, honestly, it's a tiny detail. It doesn't actually make the anime bad. I'm just a nerd. Um, there were some, some fun Minecraft references in that episode that I enjoyed. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's Dr. Stone. I don't know what else you want me to tell you. If you like Dr. Stone, you're already watching it. And next, something I've been really interested to see, which is the Konosuba Megumin spin-off. I'm pretty excited to watch this. Big Connor Super fan. Big Megumin fan. Uh, yeah, let's see how this goes. This is Kono Subarashi Sekai ni Bakuen Wo. Exciting. Let's go. Well, I just watched episode one of the Megumin Su- Kono Super spin off prequel thing. And it was great. I'm a little later this party than I normally am. Most of these shows are like on episode 3 by now, or something like that. Uh, but you know me, fashionably late. Let's just call it fashionably late. No, this was great. Um, it was funny as hell. I mean, it's everything you want. It's, it was very funny. It had plenty of moe. It was well directed, well animated. There was a a, a fun match cut that I thought was pretty funny. Um, yeah, no, it's just good. It's just just all around good. Definitely had me had me laughing out loud in real life a few times throughout the episode. Uh, we'll definitely be watching the rest of this. Um, you know, big fan of Konosuba, so more Konosuba is always good for me. Um, very happy. It's good. Uh, this is the second season to something I haven't seen, so I'm not going to watch that. Uh, next up is Mashal. How, just to check, how, how far... Oh, we got a, we got a while to go. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this today. I might have to start. I don't know. I don't know what to do about this. I don't think I'm getting this far. Okay, well, Mashal. Let's do it. Let's watch Mashal. Ah, of, of course. Mashal stands for... Magic and muscles. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Stop this. Stop this nonsense. Stop this nonsense. Build your fucking fantasy cities next to a river. I guess there's a river. But it doesn't come out anywhere. Is Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe. But the river doesn't go over. You're telling me the river comes in here. And then they buried it underground. That's absolute fucking nonsense. Also, this is way too small of a river to... For city. Also, where are your farms? Out like this? This is your farms? What is this? This is ridiculous. If you're gonna have a big medieval walled city, 
It should have a river going through the middle of it for fucking transporting goods in and out of the city. Otherwise, how's anyone making money? How's anyone getting anything? And it should be surrounded by farms. Not just trees literally right up against the wall. What is this fucking nonsense? Also, why are there even forested bits inside the walls when you just have to go outside? What is that? Parks? There's no parks? Unless you're telling me that people have their plots of land, but then they'd be way too small. Like, I could imagine you could farm some vegetables, like here, but you're not farming grains on plots of land this small. It's not happening. Are you actually criticizing generic isekai city? Yes, I can't, I'm mad about, I hate generic isekai city. It's just generic isekai city. I know, I don't... It's probably derived from, like, some fucking... 90s RPG overbuilt now yeah. like 10 pixels. And they're bad. It's just generic isekai city. You can't criticize every it single one of them. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. You can't criticize all of them. If I keep criticizing them. it, maybe they'll listen. No, they maybe won't. Maybe they'll listen. You've made your opinions known. You, when you talk about one, you've talked about them all. I don't know, man. It doesn't take that much effort. To, like, they even put a river here, man. Of they just they buried it underground. Yeah, they just have a weird river. That's generic isekai city. Oh, it's just it just has a weird river. You don't just don't have a weird river. Have a normal river. It's probably from like Dragon Quest fucking two and everyone's copying. Yeah, maybe. It's probably what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Or actually, there's a theory that like all the isekai anime or whatever, like there's a city in Japan that looks kind of like this. I see. So it's based off of that, or something like that. I mean, these sorts of tiered inner walls are a real thing. Yeah. Except that if you have a really big city like this, you know what those are full of? They're full of people. Mm -hmm. I know what people need. Yeah. Fucking food. How are you feeding all of these people? Oh my god. Well, I just watched the first episode of Mashal. I was actually pretty good. I mean, it started off a little weird. Um, the jokes are pretty hit or miss, but it was pretty funny. It kind of One Punch Man esque, um, very One Punch Man esque actually. Uh, definitely biting One Punch Man's st- swag with a with a fantasy bent, a little bit. But uh, I mean, there's a lot of shows that are kind of like that, com- comedic shows where the joke is that the main character is ridiculously powerful, like. One Punch Man or um, Psyche K, for example. Wait, which one? Mashal. I see. It's, it's magic and muscles. There's a manga I'm reading that's like that, which is like tactile receptionist is super OP or something right. like that. Isn't yeah, there's a, it's a pretty common trope, but it's funny. That's a, that's a really good manga because like the main character <laughs> is just basically a middle level in an isekai world as an adventure skilled receptionist, but she's also like the strongest person in the entire world. I see. So, like, when shit gets real and she has to work over time because they can't conquer a dungeon, she just fucking hits the monsters with a hammer and they die. And she doesn't have to keep working over time. Nice. Yeah. <coughs> this one's a bit more, like... I mean, there's there's kind of, like, shonen stuff, drama mm-hmm. stuff in it, as well as comedy. Kind of like One Punch Man. That's why I related it to that. The, the the plot is that there's the world is fascists who are ethno purists for magic users <laughs> and the main character's not a magic user, so he's being hunted down once they find out that he's not a magic user, but he spent every day in hiding with his like G Chan yeah. just just lifting weights <laughs> and so he's just insanely strong. And because everyone's a magic user, they don't know how to fight against like physical attacks. Because everyone just uses yeah. magic to do everything. There's another anime like that. Uh, it's kind of like, um, I mean, uh, a certain magical index is basically that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Black Clover also has the same kind of pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'd finish this show, but I think I'll keep watching for a few more episodes. It's fun. It's not a masterpiece or anything, but it's fun. <clears throat> so far, good season. Next up is Yamada-kun to Lever QQQ no Koi wa suru. Um, 
not sure what to expect with this one. Looks like a romance. Madhouse? Could be good. Okay, so I watched an episode and a half of Yamada Kun to... But my love story with Yamada Kun at level 999. Honestly, pretty fun show. Uh, not really good enough to keep watching, in my opinion. I'd probably give it a 5 out of 10. Um, I watched like 1 and 2 thirds episodes. I'm going to count that. I'm going to round it up as 2. Got to pump those numbers up, you know. I started the second episode. That's how I count it. Because otherwise, if I dropped a show halfway through the first episode, I couldn't mark anything, right? So I've got this in my brain. Every ep- this is this is this is not just me cheating on camera. This is how I've always done it. Is I mark an episode as watched the second I start the episode. Um even if I don't finish the episode. Uh except for the final one, obviously. Um <clears throat> But even then, finishing the final episode is when you mark it as completed. Right? Starting the final episode is when you put the plus 12, or 13, or 26, or whatever. That's how I've always done it. Because uh, that's just what makes sense to me. Otherwise, if you drop a show halfway through the first episode, you would mark it as having watched zero episodes, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, yeah, I'd probably give it like a 4 or 5. Um, I guess depends how much you're into MMOs and how much you're into romance anime. But not super duper my thing, but it's not badly made or anything. It's a little boring, a little slow, and not in my sort of wheelhouse of genres. But again, like, I've not seen anything actually bad so far. Like, none of these shows have been bad by any means, which is surprising. Normally, you get at least one dog shit show. Uh, so, I guess it's a pretty good season this season. Um,. But that might be all about the change with Tengoku Daimakyo, which we're going to watch now. Yeah, I just watched the first episode of Tengoku Daimakyo. Um, it was pretty good. Uh, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just, um, uh, burnt out from, from watching a bunch of shows back to back, but I, I'm finding it a little tricky to get hyped for it, necessarily, like, I think it's pretty interesting. I mean, it's production IG, so you know it's good. It's a 3D CG show, post-apocalypse kind of thing. Um, it does look pretty interesting. Uh, but I I don't know if I would necessarily keep watching it. Uh, it this this seems like the sort of show that can go really downhill in the second half. Uh, because it's the sort of show that's setting up a bunch of mysteries as to how the world got like it is, and setting up a bunch of settings and characters, and it's like, you know. That's the easy part, right? Resolving that in a satisfying and interesting way is the hard part. So this is the sort of show where it can easily sort of go very wrong in the second half. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, it looks great. It's extremely well animated and well directed. Uh, the characters have really great chemistry with each other as well. Um, I think I recommend checking this one out because I haven't heard anyone talking about this at all. Um, it's pretty cool, pretty neat, pretty pretty interesting. I mean, the post-apocalyptic sort of realism setting, but then there's also another setting that isn't sort of so normal for post-apocalypse, I guess. I don't know, it's interesting. A little bit Haibane Renmei-esque setting in one part, but then a little bit like I don't know, maybe, maybe sort of a The Road or a Last of Us setting. Um, yeah, it could get good, but I don't have super... It's production IG. A few years ago, I would have said I had a lot of faith in them, but I think I'll probably, you know, watch a few more episodes of that at some point, see if I can give it some better judgment. I'm going to withhold judgment now. Again, I have so many anime to fucking speed run through. I I don't want to get hung up watching like three episodes of each show because I'll never finish this. Uh, so I'm gonna withhold judgment until uh and come back and I'll I'll watch the the other episodes that are out and then I'll see if I think it's it's gonna actually be good for the whole run. But the first episode was good. Like if I'm just judging it on the quality of that episode, it was good. Uh, but yeah, so far 
nothing terrible this season. But that's all about to change right now. I know I just said that, but this one is Isekai de Cheat is the first three words, and so now we're in for some real shit, okay? Uh, some real dog shit. Uh, this is, oh god, long ass light novel title. Holy shit, that's the, the, that's a long title. Isekai de Cheat skill wo tenishita ore wa genjitsu sekai wo mo musuru musosuru level up wa jinsei wo kaeta. Or, I got a cheat skill in another world and became unrivaled in the real world, too. Oh, this is one of these isekai, but it's both worlds memes. This is a new thing that's been happening. Uh, okay, well, I don't expect this one to be any good, but I kind of like isekai trash, so it could be fun. If it's trashy in the right way. It looks like ass. Like, the way the hair looks on this guy looks, like, really bad. So, uh guy's face doesn't this doesn't fill me with hope is this chinese no it is japanese i don't know why i thought that it's, it's called a is isa de veru isa de bere. i don't know well we'll give it a shot and see see how it goes fuck even this show isn't that bad there's no bad shows i just want one bad show this show isn't even that bad. It looks terrible. It looks incredibly ugly. The character designs especially just look very bad. But the show's not even bad. Fuck. Like, normally you can tell from an Isekai first episode, even though every Isekai first episode is the same, right? You can tell the quality of the dialogue and the directing and the animation and stuff when it's going to be absolute dog shit. It's fine. It's not the best Isekai ever made. That is honestly not that bad. Fuck. <laughs> I just want, there's no bad shows this season. What the hell is happening? Honestly, I would, I would definitely marathon this show once it was done. 100%. Okay, I have not watched the first season of Mahotsukai no Yome. So I will not be watching that. Oh, I should probably give you some more details. Um, this isn't a little disappointing. So the main character of the show is really fat and ugly. But then he gets, it's it's set in a more realistic, I guess, kind of, kind of gritty, not super gritty, but kind of gritty. Instead of dying and being reincarnated, there's like a magical doorway in his grandpa's house that got left to him in, in, when his grandpa died. That leads to the isekai world. And I guess his grandpa left him a bunch of really strong isekai gear as well. It's actually a pretty interesting premise, I think. Um... I mean, obviously it's a cheap isekai, so it can only be so interesting, but it's not that bad. Like, it's a way more interesting way to give the main character strength than a lot of the random shit that isekais try. Um, but yeah, the art is consistent, even though I don't think it looks good. Uh, but yeah, the big problem, I, or the, the thing that I thought was kind of annoying is he he's a really fat guy. And then he goes to the Isekai world, and then because he levels up in the Isekai world, it makes him really attractive as a per like really fit, right? And so he gets like abs and shit. It's like he was actually attractive underneath it. He's just always been fat, um, and had like bad skin. But I kind of want to see. I feel like it'd be more interesting if he was just fat, and over the course of like let's say the first three episodes. You see him, because he's in the isekai world, fighting and doing shit, like manual labor shit all the time. Tending his crops and fighting and walking around all the time. He just loses weight and gets fit. Like, you could sort of have it happen unusually fast, right? But it's kind of disappointing that he just, it just all, ha it literally happens overnight. He just transforms into an ikemen. I kind of would would have rather seen him work at it. To have that sort of satisfying progress, that's what you really want in an isekai. Um, but, yeah, I guess we'll have to see. Because I suppose the thing about the like cheap isekais is I feel like their quality is somewhat based on like how difficult is it for the main character to actually achieve their goals. 
if if it's a cheat isekai where the guy's just the strongest guy, everything's fucking easy to them, Kirito style, and it's like there's not really any conflict, there's not really any struggle. The, it's really hard to root for the main character. But even if the main character is strong, but if they're strong because they're putting in hard work all the time, or if they're very strong and they use it to do... Instead of being like, I'm really strong, so I'm going to be the strongest, right? You get something like Slime Isekai, where the main character is really strong and then uses that to help lots of people, which, you know, naturally sort of neuters the fact that it's sort of a cheat Isekai, right? Like, I feel like there's there's ways around it. Like, there's ways... You don't just... It's not interesting to just see the strong guy be strong, right? I want to see the strong guy struggle for some reason, struggle to help friends, and then it's like or, like, maybe struggle to become strong. Yeah. Uh, I've also not seen the first season of All Summer Ranking, so I'm not going to watch that. Uh, so I guess my next show is Kimi wa Hokago Insomnia. So I will watch that now. You know what it is? It's not just that none of these shows are trash. It's that none of these shows are trash E. Where's all the trash? Is it, is it, how long has it been like this? Is this new? Because we're still in the, the section of, of Mal where it's, like, normie shit. Like, maybe, like, like here is where you get down to the non-normie shit, I think. I feel like. Right? Maybe? Some of the slice of life's? I don't know. This Insomniac show is pretty good as well. It's not trashy. It's just a cute romance. Um... Yeah, it's well anim again, like it's well shot. The animation is you know, nothing to write home about, but definitely not bad by any means. You know, there's definitely a few cuts there that I thought were pretty nice looking. Um and the characters have good chemistry. Like most romance anime have sh- shitty character chemistry. This one's cute. Like again, it's not something I would normally go out of my way to watch, but If you're a romance guy, um, check it out. If you struggle with insomnia, you know, it might be relatable to you. It might be something that's worth checking out. Um, no, overall, good show. I, I would say that was a good first episode. Uh, although I didn't actually finish it, but I think I get the picture. I, I'm like pointing it over here. I don't know why. Anyway, next is Skip to Loafer. Now this, this has got to be bad. This has got to be bad. With a name like that and a tag of drama, this has got to be bad, right? Well, <laughs> you will not be surprised to find out that Skip to Loafer is another show which is not bad, but just not my thing. Uh, I think if, if you're into cute anime boys from the perspective of a high school girl getting into romances which seems to be what this show is gonna be you might enjoy it uh but as for me i might watch it if i had nothing else to watch like this isn't a show that i would avoid necessarily i think again this, de- this definitely seems like a third episode melodrama type of show, uh, 100%. But, again, it's not badly made, badly produced. It's pretty, pretty solid production, pretty solid writing, stuff like that, you know. All the stuff I've said about everything, every other fucking show, because none of these are bad. What the fuck is going on? Just not my genre, not my sort of thing. Not trashy enough for me. There's no goddamn trash, there's no goddamn... Up- it's not otaku. There's nothing otaku. Where's the otaku? There's no nothing. What happened to all the otaku? Where did we all go? Are we a lost fucking species? Where's all the, the, the bullshit targeted at us? Okay? I feel like I'm part of a dying breed. I feel like they've they've taken over our animes. The the people who like like nice romances. Is this women? Is it women who have done this? I mean, good for them. You know what? All of these shows that are well better written than the stuff they were making targeting Otaku. So uh, I guess I guess uh, 
if there's maybe there's been some sort of boom in female targeted uh works and uh they have a higher standard for quality of writing so you know good for me <laughs> i'm not complaining necessarily again none of these shows are bad at all it's just, it's just not what i'm used to surprising did I, I feel like i've skipped out on a couple of seasons but that's not even true i feel like i watched some shows last season no i don't know what's happened maybe i'm maybe i'm going crazy am i going crazy am i going insane okay next up is uh Boku no Kokoro no Yabai Yatsu. Uh, let's, let's, let's check this out. Okay, so uh, Boku no Kokoro no Yabi, Yabai Yatsu. Uh, I think uh, not, not something I'm particularly interested in. Even less so than the others. Pretty mid. Pretty very mid. Uh, yeah, I'm just, not much more to say there. I feel like maybe if you're... I mean, you're spoiled for comfy romance anime this season, but uh, if you've already watched all the other ones, maybe check this one out. Uh, I was kind of interested by the gimmick, that the main character is like obsessed with murder, but it honestly doesn't, I mean, just from the first episode, it's very much just a gimmick that doesn't really play into the show that much, it seems like. Uh sort of a, just a little character quirk rather than a plot point. I don't know. It's just like a weird selling point that doesn't really have much to do with what's pretty much just a generic, kind of a generic romance. It's not a romantic comedy kind of thing. Not very funny, though. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Okay, now this one has to be bad. Look at that, look at that fucking cover. This has to be dog shit. This is Isekai Shokan wa Nidome des. Um, we're going to watch Isekai Shokan wa Nidome des. Holy shit, this is the first show that actually has anime quality animation. Like, this show actually has mid-tier anime quality. And immediately. This whole season has been, like, I don't know if they're relatively higher budget or higher staff count studios or whatever. But this one's actually clearly animated by, like, five guys and a, a horse or something. I, I don't know why I said that. Uh, finally, this, this is what anime is supposed to be. A bunch of people in a generic school uniform barely moving as they get summoned to another world. This is what, this is what anime is all about, man. We're back. We're back, baby. We're back in my fucking home territory. Hell yeah. Well, I just watched the first episode of Isekai Shoka Manido Medes. And it's exactly what you'd expect. It's trashy. It's The dialogue is stilted. And it's exactly what I want from an Isekai like this. I am going to marathon this at the end of the season. And probably have a lot of fun with it. I like shows like this. I'm a defender of the shitty isekais, okay? You should know this about me by now. Uh, they have value. One day I'll make a video about it, maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. But, uh, yeah, don't watch this unless you like trashy isekais. Um, this is definitely a trashy isekai. Like, 100%. And honestly, on the scale of trashy isekai, this is, like, lower on the scale of, like, good trashy isekai. Then we're gonna come to one that's, so, like, isekai's smartphone, the first season of that, that's, like, actually slightly higher on the scale of trashy isekai than this one. Uh, uh, as you can see, I mean, this one has, like, a 6, a 6.6 rating. It's pretty fucking bad for Mal, right? So, don't go in expecting anything good. Uh. I, I don't think I can recommend this to most people, uh, unless you, you just want... I, I, this is the sort of show that I might drop. It might be too trash for me. Like, there's a level of self-aware, kind of, or, like, not taking itself too seriously, or maybe taking itself so seriously that it sort of wraps around that I'm happy with. But then, this could just be really bad. <laughs> this could be, like... Like, a lot of the times I find the trashy isekais, they may be, like, shit, but they're, they're, they're rarely boring. But this one 
is bad enough that it could turn out to just be boring. Um, so yeah, this is the first actually bad show of the season, and I'm I'm happy to find it. I'm happy about it. Uh, I like I like bad anime. Uh, next we've got My Home Hero. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and watch My Home Hero. I don't know if you noticed, but this year I'm uh, or this season. I'm not reading the descriptions of the shows before I watch them, which is something I normally do. I feel like it slows down the video, and it's also pointless, because it's like I'm about to watch the show anyway. It's not like I'm choosing to watch it or not. So having expectations going in doesn't really mean anything, right? So so I've decided to not read the descriptions of shows before going in. I'm just just reading the title, studio, genre, and I'm diving right into it. Then I can I can always tell you what, what happens or genre it is, right? Without without having to read the description first. Okay, this show is actually dog shit. Finally, a show that has zero redeeming qualities even as trash. Thank you. Okay, this show is fucking crap. <laughs> it looks like shit. The dialogue is shit. The plot is shit. The pacing is weird. And stilted, everything is strange. That it doesn't really make any sense. Character motivations are unclear. The it's even directed in a way where it's kind of hard to follow what's going on at certain times. This is a very bad show. This is a bad show. My home hero, terrible. The the plot of this show is there's a salary man, an ordinary salary man whose daughter is dating a Yakuza, but then he, rat like, coincidentally sort of ran, runs into that Yakuza bragging about how he punched his daughter and then follows them to a house, which I'm not sure whose house it is. Is, is it his daughter's house? But then it's very, it's a bit strange. And then the Yakuza comes, he hides in the closet, then the Yakuza's like, I'm just gonna, is like on the phone, talking about how he's gonna milk her for inheritance money, and so the salary man just fucking murders the Yakuza to protect his daughter. His wife then comes home, and they decide to like, hide the body together to cover up the murder, and I guess the show is about the Yakuza, like, finding out that he killed one of them, and then, like, coming to get him, but it's, it's honestly, it's a, it's, it's not good, it's not good. Okay, next up, we got Dead Mount Death Play, holy shit, that's a name, Dead, Dead Don Mount to Death to P Desuplay. Dead don't mount to desuplay. Um, this show looks awful. I'm excited. We're in the bad section now. We're in the bad section. I'm I'm home. I'm home. Why Why did anime feel the need to put the worst CGI ever fucking filmed in the first two minutes of their show? Like this looks like ass. This looks like a PS2 cutscene. Come on now. You're better than this. Save that shit for like episode five. Wait, wait, wait. We can, we can fucking deal with it then. Okay, this is the worst first episode that I've watched so far, and what I mean by that is, okay, so the the CG looks like ass and, uh, whatever. The two D animation's fine, but what's bad about it is that this is a like five minute long, at least. You know, so far, five minute long fight scene at the start of the first episode. Before we have any context for who the characters are, what the world is, what any of this means. So there are, there are literally zero stakes. Like, what does it mean? Who is this guy? Why do I care if he wins or loses this fight? What does this mean? It's It's terrible. Like, why would you decide to do this? I have no reason to care if this guy wins or loses the fight. Not just because, like, not even because he's not been characterized yet and I don't know who he is. But I don't even know, like, who's the guy he's even trying to kill. 
I mean, I guess they're trying, they're kind of expositioning it now, five minutes in. But that's five minutes of shit that doesn't need to be in your show. It's literally pointless. Like, if it was really impressive animation, it would work. Maybe work as, like, a hook, but it's literally, like, PS2 graphics, skeleton, generic skeleton army versus generic guy in armor with a sword. And even his exposition backstory was 30 seconds of shit that is also really generic. Like, this is just a terrible... This does not serve any... Of the functions a first episode should serve. It's not hooking you into the show. I mean, it's, it's, this is a terrible decision. This is, like, really bad. Uh, that having a, a nonsense... F- like, having... Starting your show off with a fight scene is not unheard of, or even bad inherently. But... Like, keep it, keep it fucking short and sweet, at the very least, please. Okay, so I just watched the first episode of Dead Mount Death Play. Um... The first, as I said, the first, like, five to ten minutes was absolute ass. Just terrible. Um, So the plot of this show is it's a reverse isekai. So um, main guy is in an isekai world as a a native and then gets transported to modern-day Tokyo. Uh, However, there's there's an actually pretty good bait-and-switch. Kind of saw it coming, but I wasn't 100% sure. I think I, I think they pulled it off fairly well. Like, I wasn't super... I thought it was a possibility, but I wasn't like, oh, that they're obviously doing that, if you know what I mean. And that is, um, just to spoil the entire first episode, because who, who fucking cares? Um, so the, the first ten minutes is the end of a regular fantasy anime where the legendary hero is fighting like a necromancer type skeleton final boss evil guy, right? And then just as they come into contact, uh at the end, main guy wakes up and is in Tokyo with a slit throat and is like, Oh, there's not even any magic here, I can't even heal my throat. Everything is so peaceful. Look, the children are smiling so and then He's being hunted by people for some reason we don't know yet. The person he's reincarnated into a body that was already a person's, but that person was just killed by a criminal organization who used drones and hitmen. And the hitman who killed him is a trope that I am a big fan of, which is a uh, sort of um, uh girl hitman who gets turned on by murder hot uh but anyway the the twist is it turns out that the guy who who got reincarnated was the evil final boss skeleton monster not the hero who defeated him and we were actually following the the the, the grim reaper skeleton monster guy the whole time and it turns out, even though there's not very much magic in this world, because he's an evil final boss necromancy guy, he does magic with the souls of the dead. So when the girl takes him down to a basement that the Yakuza used to kill people, he can do magic. Which is kind of neat. I mean, I've been kind of waiting to watch a reverse isekai for a while. I know there are manga with this premise that exists, but I don't... I mean, I might have just missed it, but I feel like I haven't seen an anime do it yet uh please feel free to let me know in the comments if i'm wrong about that i haven't watched every single anime uh so i might very well be um yeah i think this might be fun trash it's very edgy um you know i don't know if it's the sort of show i would stick with for a whole 12 episodes but i feel like it might be fun you know uh I kind of wish it was, I don't know, I think it might be fun. It might be absolute dog shit, though. Uh, again, a lot of these shows where they're sort of, you're watching them for the trashiness, it's the sort of show where the trashiness is fun, and then a few episodes in it gets a bit grating. This feels like that kind of show. Um, uh, and speaking of trashiness, it's now time to watch the first episode of 
Isekai smartphone because I have actually watched the first season of that. Um, so I'm gonna gonna watch that now. Okay, so far, Smartphone Isekai season two is just more Smartphone Isekai. If you watched and liked the first season, you will watch and like this first season. It's the same quality, the same type of dialogue. I mean, it's just the same thing. It basically st- I, it's just the same, it's just the same, same thing. Just the same, same thing. Okay, next up is Otonari no Ginga. Uh, let's check this one out. What is it? Romance, Supernatural? I don't know. I don't know anymore. I'm starting to go a bit delirious. Why is there so much anime? When did they start making this much fucking anime? Holy shit. This is really the season of fucking romances. I don't think I've ever seen a season with this many romance anime. It's insane. What's going on here? What's happening? Uh, This is a show about a manga artist who's also in a Papa Wadoko situation. And then a female manga assistant comes who has a thorn in her and is the... I don't really know. There's there's vague stuff that's going to be explained later in the show. She's probably like an alien or something. Or magic is involved. I'm guessing alien. Alien would be my guess. Uh, I don't know. Could be a cute romance Again, if you're, if you're, listen, if you're really into, like, rom-com kind of stuff, you're, this is the season for you, man. You can watch every show that came out and, and enjoy it, but it's not super my genre. Uh, are we getting there? There's so much! There's so much left! What the fuck is this? Okay, we gotta skip some of these. There's no way I can watch all of this. I just can't physically watch all of this before. Like, I have like two hours before I go to one hour before I go to sleep. I gotta, I gotta be selective here. Um. Okay, I wanna watch. Uh. I don't know, man. I I don't want this to continue to another day. There's just too much goddamn anime. Normally there's more second seasons that I can skip and stuff like that. This is this is crazy. There's too much goddamn anime. What the fuck is this? Okay. Uh I guess do I just keep going? How many's left? One, two, three, four. Not gonna watch this. Five six seven. Oh, I'm excited to watch Mahashojo Magical Destroyers. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. That's not a real anime. Okay, at fifteen. I'm just gonna say fifteen, maybe six. This is maybe a sec. I I I don't know what this is. Is the second season? No, I don't think so. 15, maybe? 15 more shows? I don't know if I have time. I don't think I can do that. I don't think that's possible. Okay, I gotta, I gotta skip some. I'm just gonna skip to the ones that, that interest me. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I don't want to fucking be doing this for the rest of my life. Uh, so I, I'm gonna watch... Um, the ones that are interesting to me are Megami no Ta- Cafe Terrace, Marshall to Magical Destroyers, and Watashi no Yuri wa Oshigoto Des. Um, and maybe Edomaya Elf, and maybe Kawaii Sugi Crisis? I don't know what this really is. Um, yeah, now we're in the weeds of the stuff that's actually appealing to me. Uh, and maybe Yushaga Shinda? That could be funny. Could be fun. Could be good trash. Uh Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip to um maybe Mao Shoujo Magical Destroyers. I don't know what to do, man. I don't know what to do. What do I do in this situation? Uh do I just continue this 
Is it tomorrow? Or what? What do I do here? I've never had too many anime before. Do I just do I just keep going and just see how far I can get? Okay, I'm just gonna be really fucking brutal. If a show isn't interesting to me immediately, I'm just gonna drop it. Okay, Kaminaki Sekai no Kamisama Ketsudo. Katsudo. We're gonna watch this one now. Holy shit! I thought the CG in that other show was bad. You're about to see something insane. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck is this? Yo, who the fuck is that? What the fuck? <laughs> That's so bad. What the hell? They didn't even try. They didn't even give any sort of effort at all. That's so bad. <laughs> okay, this is a pretty wacky, pretty bad isekai. Not great for a first episode. Sort of devolves into melodrama. Um, with a lot of stupid shit. Uh, however, I thought some of the comedy was kind of funny. Um, so, I guess if the show just had some melodrama in the first episode, and then the rest of the show is mainly comedy focused, it could be good. Uh, it's definitely the, the first edgy show that we've watched tonight. And, uh, I like some, some raunchy comedy stuff. Uh, you know. Feels very anime to me for that sort of stuff to exist. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can say I recommend it to anyone. If you're a hardcore isekai completionist like me, you might want to watch it. Um, we yeah, had definitely some uh, some not so great dialogue in there. Not so great. A lot of definitely. The main thing, bad world building. The world is bad and doesn't make any fucking sense. Uh, the characters are stupid and do stuff that makes them bad because they're stupid. Because they act in stupid ways like stupid people. Uh, and all the problems are caused by them just being stupid. So that's definitely a problem. Uh, there's pretty obvious... There's a lot of, there's a lot of problems with this show. <laughs> it's not very good. Uh... Yeah, it's kind of saved by the fact that I found some of the comedy scenes slightly funny. Uh, but I don't think that's enough to save a show, to be honest. Probably shouldn't have watched the f whole first episode. Probably a waste of my time. Uh, next up is uh, another isekai, I guess. Tensei Kizoku no Isekai Bokuren Bokenroku Jicho wo Shiranai Kamigami no Shito. Uh, so we're gonna watch this one now. Holy shit, there's so much isekai, man. There's just so fucking much. Look, I'm just not even gonna try with this show. It's 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 a very generic isekai. We're not even gonna try. We're not even gonna bother. We're gonna move on. We got so much shit to get through. And now for another very generic isekai, Yusha Gashinda. Uh, this has a kind of interesting gimmick, I guess. So, but. It's not particularly well executed. It's supposed to be pretty comedy focused. There was one joke in this episode that, which I thought was really funny, but it was just that one little throwaway sight gag. Um, the gag was the main character is obsessed with thighs. He he digs up a a rad a daikon, and he's like, "This daikon looks like a thigh," and he's he puts a he puts tights on it. He he. He puts a, not tights, a stocking. He starts pulling up a stocking on the daikon, right? Because it looks like it, because he's a pervert and he's obsessed with thighs. And then the the childhood friend character is like, what the, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and he's like, this daikon looks like thighs. Any man would obviously put a stocking on it. And then she's like, what are you talking about? Only a fucking degenerate pervert would do something like that. And then the camera smash cuts to, like, to people, like, it's not smash cuts, like, sweeps over. What's the word I'm looking for? Oh, it's fucking sleepy time up in this bitch. It's, it swings really quickly and cuts while it's doing that. What's the fucking word for that? God, I'm sleepy. Uh, it, it cuts over to, to the people walking by. And it's just about uh, like three guys, and they just like are all like hiding their daikons with with 
with stockings on them. It's <laughs> pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, that was the only good joke. Uh, the rest of this was bad, and you should probably not watch it. I only was the only reason I mentioned being excited for it was because I like anime girls with white hair, and uh, this has the etchy tag, so I was like, sexy anime girl with white hair, hell yeah, but uh, not really, no. Uh, okay, next up is Kanojo wa. Koshakute ni itari. This is not some. I'm not gonna like this fucking. Is this another isekai? Oh my god. It's another fucking isekai. I should have explained the plot of Yushagashinda. The main character accidentally kills the legendary hero. And then a necromancer puts him in the body. The, the dead, rotting, zombified body of the legendary hero after he accidentally kills him. Um. And then wacky hijinks ensues, I suppose. It's kind of a, a novel idea. I just don't think it was super well executed. Okay, so this is a uh, reincarnated as a side character, Isekai, who's destined to die. But you've already read the book. This is normally, this has been done with like Otome games a couple of times, like where someone's reincarnated in a story they already know as a character they know dies, and they have to use the knowledge of future events from having read the book or whatever in order to prevent their fate. Um, which I've never been a big fan of that gimmick, and this is not a particularly well-executed one, even compared to the ones that are normally not particularly well-executed. Uh, next is Kuma 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 Bear Bunch. Well, my fucking god. Kuma 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 Bear Punch, which is the second season of Kuma 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 Bear. I've already read the manga of Kuma 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 Bear, so I will not be watching that. Um, it's another Isekai. This is Isekai One Turn Kill Nesan, my one hit kill sister. Um, okay, I'll watch this one. Uh, all I can hope for is some entertaining femdom for, for five minutes before I drop it, please. Yeah, this is a pretty uninteresting show. I don't think I can recommend it. The gimmick is... I mean, the gimmick is in the title. Main guy's reincarnated, but his sister is too, and his sister's the strong one. He's just a normal guy. I don't know what they're expecting to do with that gimmick. It's not very interesting. Also, weirdly, the sister character is a very obvious ripoff of Yoko from Gurren Lagann. Like, she looks exactly like Yoko from Gurren Lagann, even down to the hairstyle. I mean, like, look. Let's see if I can find... I don't know. You can't really see a good picture here. But, like, her outfit, her hair, everything is just looks like Yoko from Gurren Lagann, which is weird. Weird strange um, yeah no not very good show not entertaining quite boring i would say actually boring uninteresting lazy poorly animated um poorly done all around i'm getting getting pretty tired so uh really got to speed run these now um uh, next is megami no cafe terrace uh hopefully this one's actually good uh i guess we'll find out soon enough Okay, this show's bad. Uh, I don't know what... I, I expected it to be more of like a slice of life -y thing. But, uh... About girls running a cafe. But it seems to be... I, I don't really know what it is. Maybe, maybe a... A harem -y thing. It's just annoying. The main character's annoying. All the girls are bad. Like, make... If you're gonna do this, the show has to be carried by cute girls. The girls aren't cute. They Is don't... this just you going insane at this point? Uh, maybe. Are you just sleep deprived and a maniac, an absolute psycho? The girls aren't cute. It's I'm making reasonable comments. I'm a reasonable you just, guy. You just sound like you're so done with everything. I'm a reasonable guy. You sound like you're over life. Maho Shoujo Magical Destroyers is next. Um, I've actually heard about this one from people. Uh, because. 
Because the main character, yeah. I think I played yeah. this one. I think I played Watashi this one. Watashi no Yuri wa Oshigoto desu. It has Yuri in the title. It does so have Yuri played. in the title. What's yeah. the description? I, I don't have time for this bullshit, though, right? I see. Oh, I've seen it and it looks like garbage, so I didn't treat it. I see. I'm excited. And you're gonna have to watch it. I'm excited. I've been excited since I saw it when it popped up. Yeah. Last season. When I should. Because it's called Yuri is My Job. I mean, that yeah. can't possibly be bad. But anyway, you're fucking distracting me. This is the thing about women. They'll do this to you. <laughs> they'll actually, unironically, they'll do this to you. They'll distract you from your goals in life, from your missions. And that's why. You only watch six minutes at 1.5 times speed, skipping the OP. Look here, you're fucking taking it too far. No. You're taking I'm this too far. I'm doing what has to be done. This is the thing. Women have no convictions. They have no capacity. I have 7,200 hours in no RuneScape. No Exactly. I have... You know how many hours I have in RuneScape? How many? Zero, because I have convictions. I have okay? convictions. Actually, of... that's not true. I have one hour in RuneScape. Because I picked it up. It was bad. I put it back down. I played it because it's good. Well, I'm glad you are having fun. <laughs> Convictions. No. Convictions. That's not convictions. You can't be more convictions than me because I'm partly Australian and Australia is a country full of convicts, which makes me the most convicted out of the two of us. Fuck. There you go. You haven't been in a fucking mental hospital. You haven't been a convict. You haven't they, been no, in no, a No, 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 that's fucking, that's fucking you stolen been valor. Been that's stolen valor. That's stolen valor. You can't do this. <laughs> I gotta watch this fucking. You're, you're doing. This is the thing. Women will do this to you. They're trying to distract you. They're trying to distract you from your goals in life. If you want to become the number one shonen hero of watching every currently airing anime, you. Every single season. You do this every season. Every season. And the, they the, just keep making more of they them. They just keep making. The they keep making more. <laughs> Every season, there's another season the next time, and there's yeah. even more. They don't just make a normal amount anymore. But fucking, <clears throat> oh my god, it's ridiculous. Okay, I'm gonna watch this show, and it's probably good. This is a good show. This is a good show. It's set in the real world, where the government is rounding people up and taking them off to concentration camps for being otaku, which is just what's happening in real life right now in my own brain. I'm convinced of it, that it's secret. But in this world, the otaku fought back, and it's it's very good. It's very cool. I like this show. It reminds me a little bit in terms of the sort of absurdism elements. I don't know why, maybe the humor, maybe the vibes of the animation or something. That gives kind of, kind of reminds me of Kuchu Baranko in some ways. But it also definitely reminds me of, um, I don't know, reminds me of a lot of stuff, but in good ways. It reminds me of a lot of stuff that I like. In good likey ways. Yeah. I like it. <sighs> <sighs> A world where you can say what you like about what you like as much as you like. That's what we want. That's what we need. And that's why you got to watch this show to enjoy this show. So you can know what the show is. Maho Shoujo Magical Destroyers. Definitely going to keep watching this one. Definitely going to keep watching this one. Definitely watching this one in the future. Okay, we're approaching how many shows left. One, two, three, four, five. Six, six shows left that I think bear any, like no one cares about any of these ones, right? Like these ones aren't even worth even mentioning. But like two people are watching this stuff. I feel like we get down to like, like Kawaii Sugi Crisis and then we just stop. I feel like that's what we're aiming for. So we got one, two, three, four, five shows left. Next is Watashi no Yuri. Well, she got told this. Um, nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna come close to the high I just experienced, of of pure otaku joy. Nothing's gonna come close to that high, but we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep it up with the Yuri show. So I watched the first episode of Watashi no Yuri while she got told this, and it was fine. It was fine. It wasn't particularly good. I would probably give it a five out of ten. 
I don't think I'm gonna keep watching it. Uh, it's it's the wrong kind of Yuri. I mean, it's fun. It's it's a fun show about girls who are pretending to be Yuri in a in a maid cafe situation, but instead of a maid cafe, it's like a a cafe where the role play is pretending to be in a shoujo manga girls school shoujo manga thingy. Which I'm not uh, super familiar with, so I don't really understand the tropes, so it kind of goes over my head a little bit. Uh, I don't really like some of the characters. I like some of the other characters, though, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Mixed on it, kind of mid. Next up is Jijo wa Shiranai Tenkose ga Grigirikuru. Okay, I just got done watching the first episode of... Jijo wo shiranai tenkose ga grigrikuru. Uh, honestly, better than I was expecting. But actually, the show's not good. It's just... It's carried by having a cute... The main girl is Moe. Lots of good Moe potential in this in this main girl. But the show itself isn't actually very good. However, what can I say? I'm a sucker for Moe. I don't, I think I'll drop it. I don't feel like I'm missing out on much. However, the main girl has got a high level of Moe potential. Um, definitely Moe goodness going on there. So we've only got three more left. Three more left until I'm calling it quits for good. Our no orchestra. Let's go. Okay, listen, I got five minutes into this show. You can accuse me of not giving it a fair chance. But I know what kind of fucking show this is, okay? This is a violin melodrama show. There's an entire fucking cottage industry of violin melodrama shows. I don't I don't I don't care for them. I do not care for these shows, my good sir. I care not for the violin melodrama shows. So on um, for that reason I'm out. Um we mark this as dropped. Yeah, I mean, we're going to give it a score. We're going to give it a score of three, just for no reason. Fuck it. Who's going to stop me? Are you going to stop me? No, you pussy-ass bitch. You have no power here. Edomaya Elf. This is the next one. And looks like we got an elf and we got we got Mikos. So, so those are two things that are in this show. And... And it's uh, it's an anime. That's what we're here to, to 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 talk about is anime. So that's good that we're watching this. Frankly, look, there's there's nothing wrong with this show. And if this was at the beginning of the list, I would have finished the first episode, and maybe watched more. But we, I can't be wasting my time with shit that I know I'm not gonna to have a strong recommend at the end of this. Okay, I can't be wasting my time with this shit. So we're gonna call it there. Uh, Edomaya Elf, it's kind of a nice slice of lifey thing, uh, but it's, it's not particularly high quality. It's not really a cute girls doing cute things show, it's more of just like a, I don't know what sort of genre to really call it, uh, yeah, I don't know, it's fine. It's a, it's a, it's fine. It's fine. It's not offensive in any way. <sighs> yeah, this is the, this is it. We, we done it. I'm, I'm calling it here. Kawaii Sugi Crisis will be our last show. We will watch it. I feel like I should say more about Edomaya Elf, but honestly, I, um, I don't have anything to say about it. It's just in, it's very mid. It's very mid. Okay, Kawaii Sugi Crisis, we, we fucking, we, we, we do it, and then we're done. Okay, so, Kawaii Sugi Crisis is about an alien who comes to Earth and then gets constantly sidetracked because the animals are cute. Particularly cats and dogs in this first episode. Um, it, I feel like it's not a terrible premise, but I, I don't see this remaining entertaining like for the first episode it's fine 
Uh, it even has one funny moment in it. But I don't like thinking about it. I feel like this is going to fail to entertain anyone for uh, for 12 episodes of 23 minutes each. Like this should have been a uh, like a five minute per episode anime rather than a full length anime, I feel like. Like it, I just, unless, I, 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 I mean, obviously I don't know, but it seems like that's the whole gimmick of the show. Alien comes to Earth and discovers that things on Earth are unusually cute, and she's not used to it. And then, and then she gets sidetracked by things being cute, which is fair. I mean, I, I, I would do that too, if I was an alien. But yeah, I, I, and it was, it was entertaining for one episode, but I, I feel like that's it. I feel like it's not going to be entertaining beyond that. And with that, I'm calling it, I think we can all agree that the other anime are just going to be, like, not even worth paying any attention to. Um, I mean, may, maybe not, but I feel like, uh, I feel like that, that's pretty obvious to me just from looking at them. So there you go, that's every fucking holy shit, it's every anime. It's all of them. It's all the anime. Um, someone had to do it. Someone had to do it to them. You know, the show has a... I mean, the season has a lack of, of, of mid shows, or no. It doesn't have anything amazing. Like, unlike, you know, you go back to winter 2023, right? You go back to winter 2023, and it's like, you've got fucking one show that's, that's particularly good, and that one show is, is, uh, is, is on e Onichan Chan Wa Oshimai, right? You got that one show that's particularly good, on e Chan Wa Oshimai. You go back another one. You go back another one and you got you got like Bocchi. Right? You got Bocchi. You got Bocchi the Rock. Like there's supposed to be one standout show. There's no standout show this season. I'm into what are you talking about? Oh, is that not the not the season? That was three seasons ago. That was last year. Oh, is there a new season of Bocchi? No. Because I've seen everyone talking about it all the time. Everyone's just always been talking. It. I've seen enough people in Bocce the Rock posting. I think it just got popular. Oh, I see. I thought there was like a new season. No, there's something. there's no new season. A new season within the space of two two seasons. That was that would be insane. Oh. That would be wacky insano mode. Oh. That would be insano mode. That'd be crazy. We live in a crazy world. That's true. We do live in a crazy world. Um, what was I talking about? Like yeah, there's there's no standout shows. Like the only thing that comes close is the Megamine show, I think. Um. Yeah, but even that is like kind of cool, I guess. Like if I'm honest, out of the ones that I said I I would watch, I feel like I'm not gonna probably finish most of these. I mean, that's normally how it goes, right? But these are just the ones that I feel like could have potential. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be honest. Although there was a lack of particular, any super deep lows, except for like maybe a, a couple of shows. You know, most of the shows in this season were, were relatively not bad. Um, there was also a lack of, of, of highs. It's kind of a kind of a middle of the road uh season this year where where nothing's particularly amazing but nothing's particularly awful uh and lots of isekai and lots of romance so if you're big into isekai or big into romance and the romances are much better than the isekais then uh then this is the season for you go check out some of these shows um I think that's all I have. Oh, Ma maybe Maho Shoujo Magical Destroyers could turn out to be the standout show. I think that has potential. It could also just be nothing. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe.